Hi there, it's Tom here from FDS, and today we are going to be doing a little mod masterclass. And the subject of today's mod masterclass is masking. And I get asked a lot about how I do some of my paint stuff, and uh, I thought I'd take five minutes out of my painting schedule just to show you guys what I do. And uh, first of all, we're going to go through very quickly tools. Obviously, hobby knife, brand new blade, every job. So every time you do a mask, you need a new blade because cutting paper tape wears them out really fast and you need a perfect point. If you have one of those break-off type knives, I recommend you chuck it and buy a proper precision knife or a scalpel. Both of those are good. And then we have these, which are a cocktail stick or toothpick, whatever you want to call them. And these are extremely useful. They're good for both removing and applying masks. And I'll show you how to use those in a minute. They should be in every modeler's toolkit. They're really, really handy. You can use them for applying small dots of glue. You can use them for filler shaping. You can use them for mixing uh, paints. And you can use them for mixing glues. And then, obviously, a straight edge. I have this handy flexible ruler, which is really useful sometimes for just going along edges of masks and tidying them up. And then we come onto the tape. Now, this is my lining tape and uh, I use regular painter's tape for uh, large areas but this is my lining tape and it's made by these guys it's called Stuck Professional and the advantage about this tape over frog tape which is very similar and does do a similar job is it's thinner now it's not as flexible as vinyl tapes but it does have this um, proper paint stop technology that it uh, trumpets which I can confirm does work and uh, this is what keeps my mask line so sharp is that this is a special edging tape Frog tape does the same job, you can purchase that in various DIY type places, Home Depot if you're in America, I know stocks it. So uh, that's a useful tape but it's quite wide and when you're working on something like this which is going to be the subject of today's mask, it can be a little bit difficult. So we're going to go straight into the masking and I'll endeavour to do this as I go along and I'll show you what it's like and then I will go away and I'll blow a bit of paint over and you can see what happens. So as I take the tape, I just take a little bit of tape each time. I don't use long lengths of tape because if you try and do this in one go, you can see this edge down here. I want to paint this part black and I want to leave this part uh, which is eventually going to be red. And what I want to do is I want to get a nice sharp edge in here. If I try and do that in one length of tape, particularly where you have these curves, it all folds up and you end up with a mess. So what I tend to do is I tend to run the tape up to the edge like this. And you can see I leave a little overlap. And this is where your little cocktail stick comes in really useful. So you can work that tape now right in and you can see there's some cavities here you've got to get it right into the edges and these are not actually as flat as they look these radar stocks they're surprisingly angular and you can fold over the edge now you've got to watch these corners because this is a prime place for tape to leak because it doesn't get good adhesion because it crinkles and what you do is you use your tool to push this down and to get it on tight you just use the end. Now the beauty of this is it doesn't actually scratch the primer. So it's not like a knife blade where you run the risk of cutting through the primer. And you can actually, I use obviously very good quality primers. But uh, you can actually be fairly forceful with that. So there's the first piece. And now I'll show you how to do into these little corners. Again, just another piece of tape. Run that in. And you'll see this is going to lap up and go over both ends. So I've worked it in with this, and this is where your scalpel comes in. And spare bits of tape, I tend to stick to the edge of my board. So take your nice fresh scalpel blade, and then you want to trim these little excess parts off. So just got to work it in there. Now you don't push with the scalpel blade, that's why we have a new one. If you push, you go straight through and you cut down to the base. So what we're doing is we're just cutting the tape. We don't want to cut the primer too much because that's going to make a mess. So we don't push. We just let the blade do the cutting work. And that is why you need a sharp blade. Now here's another trick. Look, you can see how this is used to remove the mask. It's much better than using your nail because it's not sharp. And it's rounded, slightly rounded at the end. And it's soft. So you can just work that tape out like that. Same again. With these really small pieces, you don't wrinkle the tape edge when you do it this way. There you go. So you can see we're developing a pretty nice sharp mask. Now the beauty of this is that it's only going to be a primer mask. I've got to put a black base over here and then there'll be top coat over here. So if I do get a big run, it's not quite so bad because these areas can be very tricky, particularly around screw ports. You can see that those areas are going to be hard to mask and there are a couple of really difficult curves on the radar stock, so I picked it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on and I'll do up here and along here and over the top. Okay, so as you can see, I've whipped through and I've done that. This is where your regular painter's tape comes in. And what you want is you want to put your regular painter's tape over this edge here, you see. And then you can even, if you're really clever, you can, if you've got soft paint, you can keep the painter's tape off the paint. Because this stuff is a, it can sometimes be quite sticky and uh, it will leave residue. And it also doesn't like getting wet. So if you're doing dip and you're masking for dip, this stuff does work very well, the dip edges. It's been thoroughly tested by me. It does sometimes leave a slightly sticky residue behind which you can remove with your favourite um, solvent. Now I tend not to use strong solvents, so don't use thinners and things like that, but most things that remove adhesive marks will take that off. And uh, it doesn't dissolve too badly when it gets wet, it doesn't fall to pieces. This stuff however does fall to pieces when it gets wet. So I've, what I've got to do now is just mask up to that edge. And I've got a piece of regular paper here which I can then try for size. Plenty of tape along the edge. And then run that up to my freshly masked edge. Again, it's always worth keeping your scalpel handy because there may be bits that you want to scalpel clean. And make sure that your edge is nice so you don't want any leaks through your regular tape. And there you go, you can see all masked, ready to go. I've just got to go up and paint it and then I'll come back and show you what's happening. Okay, so here we are, we're actually ready to remove the mask now. And uh, you can see that I've just sprayed it black. I did get a tiny little chip in the back there which I'll touch in later. So first I'm going to take off my paper mask. And you'll see that this comes away very easily. And you want to do this when the paint is still slightly soft. Because then your tape, when you remove your painter's tape, your tape will cut an edge into the paint. So you have to be a bit careful when you do it because the paint isn't fully hard and any mistakes you make obviously are going to wreck your finish. So a little bit of patience. So we can take that away and then we can just get in under an edge. So we just get in under an edge. You can see here this is where this really comes into its own, this little tool, because I can just work it to get hold of the paint. I can just go in like that and get hold of all these little bits. And you can see that is now giving a really nice clean edge. This was rattle canned the black because I very rarely bother with small pieces. It's not worth loading the gun for a little bit like this. So it takes an hour to clean it all afterwards. You can see that we're not actually damaging the primer finish underneath as we do this. Be careful to keep the paint, if there's any damp paint on those bits of tape, keep it separate from your piece and so put it out of the way somewhere and don't let it touch your mum's upholstery or leave on the dining room table or anything like that so that will make you unpopular. So just like that next piece. And you can see I'll cut it into the wet tape edge, cut into the slightly wet paint like that. So there you can see the uh, super fine edge you get with this. And that is absolutely straight. There's no paint bleed through. You can see here where a bit of paint bled through the tape. This is why you'd be careful in the corners and edges because it does come through there more often. So now I've just got to peel that back. And again, I think you'll agree that that is a very, very sharp edge in that paint. And there's not many paint processes that will give you that good an edge. So there's my little tips for how to get professional level masking and painting on your blasters. So no more excuses for soft or bad edges. You've got the tools and you've got the techniques. So uh, you can see that is how I do my striping and lining using tape.